It's fair to say that let's say, the environment we all work like in has fundamentally changed and will never be the way it was. What that therefore also means is that every company, small or large, will have to look at the way they do business, the way they engage with customers, um, and, 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 and look in the mirror and take stock and say, we've been doing this for a long time in a certain way, and it worked well. It worked very well in the Celtic Tiger years. Um, that phase is now clearly over. So take a good look at yourself as an organization um, and as, a, as an industry and as a government and as a country and investigate what do we really fundamentally need to do different uh, from, what, from what we've done in the past. So it is a good look in the mirror and, and really uh, taking stock. Um, a, a part of it uh, you can actually see a little bit behind me is, is, is the office, um, and, but it is only one of the things that we've done. So other than taking stock and saying we did really well, we lost a little bit uh, sight of our customer, we lost sight of the performance of the company. So first of all we needed to come up with a, a new strategy, secondly we needed to come up with a completely different way of looking, which is organization, leadership, uh, people management. And then lastly, and that's what you then actually see behind me, is what we call the new ways of working, is an office environment that actually facilitates that new way of, new way of working. Um, the most important thing I would say is, uh, is, is to, to revisit your strategy and with your people, with your people managers, uh, to find a different way of doing things. And then an office environment like our new ways of working um, can help to create that change. Technology is, of course, a, a fundamentally important to this. We have taken, however, an approach where we said technology is important, but technology is the facilitator. And that's important. What we have done is we've taken the approach as what would we do if we were a customer? If we were our own customer, what would we do? And then you don't actually start by designing a technology infrastructure. You actually start by where are we now? Where do we want to go? What do we need? What's the profile of our people? What way of working would facilitate this company best? And then you actually know, okay, so what we designed our new ways of working, we said we want more collaboration, we want more mobility, uh, and of course we wanted to showcase our own products and services. So that's what we took as a starting point. And then we looked at the office and said that means we want to create a completely open space, a flex desk culture. So we have zero offices and nobody even has their own desk. But then you also realize we also needed to make uh, the whole office uh, wireless, uh, which it wasn't uh, when I came into the business. Um, so then you come to the technology bit and say, okay, in order to facilitate that plan and that way of working, you need to make an office completely wireless. If you want people to be able to work from home or remotely, you need to equip them all with a laptop and or a smartphone uh, and things like, like our own products and services. And that was the best thing. We could actually use our own products and services and our own technology, starting from Wi-Fi to using 3G, using the mobile internet, using laptop, using smartphones and then actually realize what is it like as a real customer to be using these services. And that has really been the big advantage for us, to showcase our own products and services, but also to actually learn from them that we actually had some way to go in improving our products and services uh, in order to use them effectively and productively. I can only uh, probably answer, or at least I would like to focus in on a few things, because I think the government is absolutely focusing on the right things. And one of the things that I personally can't fix, or Vodafone can't fix, is to focus on employment, uh, jobs, and creating an environment that is uh, fit for purpose for companies uh, uh, to create more employment. I think the, the government is doing the right thing, so I'm not going to zoom into that. Other things that companies like Vodafone can do and will do, uh, but what also the, the government can be uh, supportive is to create a, uh, a good climate. Um, and this is where I talk about focus on, the, uh, on two sectors, education and ICT in general. Education sounds obvious, but if there's one area where I would suggest that we should never ever uh, uh, cut back uh, or underinvest, it is education. That's the future of a country. We have great people, we have a good educational system, but we need to make sure that if you look 10 years ahead, we need to make sure we don't lose out against, let's say, emerging markets who are fastly uh, outpacing us at this point in time. So an investment in education, but also, of course, an investment in ICT, core broadband. 
uh, infrastructure is not competitive today and we're losing ground rapidly. So in order for schools even to be uh, effective, but certainly every business to be able to compete internationally, we do need to have a better overall ICT infrastructure uh, for us to actually use any type of cloud computing, any type of modern communication means, any type of video conferences. That can only be done if you actually have that core infrastructure. So that is a basic need and it isn't yet at the level where it should be. Well, one of the first things uh, uh, for us is, is to recognize it as, as a key area to focus on in the enterprise market. Ireland is quite uh, an, an unusual market in the sense that there is an, an, an enormous number of entrepreneurs. There's a lot of startups. In particular, in the, in, in the 2008 onwards years, a lot of people, by choice or necessity, started their own company. Um, and it's a great uh, opportunity for companies like Vodafone to actually support and facilitate that. Um, it's also, by the way, already in the heritage of, of Irish, Irish people. People are entrepreneurial and they do start new businesses. So it's a focus area for us. Um, and one of the key things that we, of course, can do is provide our products and services and tailor them to the needs of, of entrepreneurs, which is all about if you're a small company, you start up, you, you need an infrastructure, but you don't want to invest a lot of money. So to be able to offer hosted solutions, cloud, cloud solutions, all terrible technical terms. But what it basically means is that a startup can use mobile and fixed communication means in a very easy way, in a grow-as-you-go model, I would almost call it, where they don't need to put up a big investment to buy infrastructure, but they can they can use it on a and pay for it on a monthly basis. So products and services like that is, is, is key. Plus, Vodafone uh, uh, is, is an innovative company. We're not an entrepreneurial company anymore because we're, we're a good-sized company by, that, by now, but we, we, we are still very innovative and can relate to the entrepreneurs. That's why we also support uh, entrepreneurs. So we have the Entrepreneur Award that we sponsor, and we really want to stay close to them. It's A, recognizing that they're important. It's B, also our opportunity to engage with them and to meet the best of them out there uh, and to be able to meet these people and, and to hand out these awards is really uh, a, a, a great thing. Plus, we have offer also a sort of a speed dating opportunity for uh, startups, our own customers. When they are a startup, we can bring them into the building and have a conversation with some of our marketing or sales or, or legal or finance people just to help them uh, along in their business. So that's the type of thing that both of them can do to help uh, the startups. I would come back to uh, your earlier uh, question and my answer on uh, priorities uh, from an economic point of view because I think that it's, it's, it's funny enough to say my answer. I would say it's education and it's ICT. And as a comparison, I take my six-year-old, who literally two days ago told me that he was Skyping with his friend in the Netherlands. And this fellow is six years old, and he went to the computer himself. So he's mimicking what he's seen other people like his bigger brother do. Um, and he knows how to Skype. He knows, knows how to use products and services in order to talk to his friend, who is an hour flying away from here. That can only be done if the products and services are there, if the core infrastructure is there. It's a simple example. But if we don't educate our people, our young, children, young kids in particular, and if we don't have ICT front and center in the educational system, and if we don't have a competitive ICT infrastructure in the country, I think we will lose that. So from a skills point of view, um, I'd say ICT, technology, engineering, uh, uh, math, science, topics hugely important for this business. The entrepreneurial spirit is in the genes of the people in Ireland anyhow, so I'm, I'm less worried there, but we need to make sure that from an educational point of view we focus on that, supported by uh, uh, the ICT investment.